the Rams will be without their three top four cornerbacks this Sunday. Find out now exactly how they are going to get through it. All right, guys, so in case you haven't hit the subscribe button and hit the like button, be sure to do that. I'll dive right into this video. So let's get started. The Rams are playing the Arizona Cardinals. We went over the preview and all that. You saw downtown Rams on this channel. And if you didn't, definitely check that out. But we already went over the preview. But since news has come up, the Rams are going to be without not only David Long, not only Troy Hill, but also Jacoby Durant, their talented fourth round pick out of South Carolina State. He just had an interception and a sack and honestly made his presence known last week in his first defensive action in the NFL. When you look at Troy Hill, that's a significant loss. He's going on the IR due to a groin injury. That means he'll be there for at least four games. And David Long wasn't really playing all that well, and now he's banged up. So when you look at it, the Rams are dealing with injuries all over the board, but just looking at the cornerback position, what can we expect moving forward? Well, you have Jalen Ramsey. He's the best corner in the game, so they're pretty good there. But who's going to play next to him? I would imagine it's going to be Robert Rochelle, the second-year man. I think that Robert Rochelle is somebody that showed you some presence last year. Uh, definitely liked his ability, and I still like his ability long-term. And I think this is going to be an opportunity for him to really take over that outside corner spot. He can play the boundary. He's physical, and he's very athletic. He's a former wide receiver turned corner, so he's got great ball skills. I would imagine he's going to have to play and have a serious role in this one because he has not had that so far this season. In addition to that, the Rams can expect to likely play for the first time this year, Darion Kendrick, who has been a healthy scratch two weeks in a row. To no fault of his own, the Rams unfortunately can only keep 48 on the active day roster. They have 53 on the roster, but you can only dress 48. There are five inactives. So because of all the injuries that are going on and no one else has really been put on the IR, they decided to hold on to Van Jefferson and Brian Allen and so forth because of that, those guys are automatically going to count against the guys that essentially can't dress uh, for the game. So because of that, I do think on top of the fact that they need corner depth, that Darion Kendrick is going to be activated for the first time this season. Now, it's only week three, so it's not a huge deal that's the first time this season. But Darion Kendrick showed you some things in preseason. Obviously, he played at Georgia, and you saw the potential there, former sixth-round pick there. And I just feel like this is somebody that really seemed to look like he had a higher floor than Jacoby Durant during the preseason. I'm much higher in Jacoby Durant, but I do really like Darion Kendrick, and I think he'll be ready to step up in any role that the Rams need. And then lastly here, only four cornerbacks actively on the roster. You look at Sean Jolly, the cornerback that they basically plucked right off of the Cleveland Browns practice squad. Jolly is a UDFA out of App State who I've already talked about in JE Live. I am a big, big fan of this guy. I went through, watched the film, and I really like, first off, he fits the role. He fits the mold of what it means to be a Rams cornerback. He's a rap tackler. He is shorter they do go after more of those shorter corners that can play inside can play outside the numbers and so I like Jolly in this game I think he's going to have an opportunity to contribute there's also a chance that they will take Grant Haley right off the practice squad somebody that played in the Super Bowl albeit it was on special teams but this is somebody that's been on the 53-man roster before I'd imagine you know Grant Haley is a potential option but two options I want to throw out here that no one is talking about first off Terrell Burgess the the third round pick out of Utah in the 2020 draft. Burgess hasn't quite exploded on the scene the way Jordan Fuller did as a sixth round pick out of Ohio State. However, Burgess has shown you in bits that he can play in this league, and I do believe he has a path to becoming a long term option. Now, the Rams also went out and they drafted Quentin Lake, who unfortunately is on the physically unable to perform list. And in addition to that, you have Russ Yeast, the corner out of Kansas State, uh, who was eventually moved to safety. He was drafted as a safety, but he also can play corner. So I think that the Rams could use both him and and they could use Burgess as guys to help out that corner spot. That way you have at least six guys there. You feel a little bit better. Maybe even Nick Scott could play some of that if you needed it. 
the Rams are going to be okay here, but who is going to step up? And as far as bodies, they'll be okay, but will they be okay when push comes to shove against what Arizona has to offer? That's what we're going to get into on this next part. So Arizona essentially does not have DeAndre Hopkins. As we know, he was suspended. He's going to miss the first half of the season or close to the first half of the season. But guys that you do have to look out for, Marquise Brown, somebody that they spent a premium to go out and get. He's been a disappointment to this point but they're going to try to get him involved, no doubt about it. In addition to that, they're going to also try to get former Ram practice squad wide receiver and returner Greg Dorch, who is actually their leading receiver. They're going to try to get him involved. They're trying to get A.J. Green involved, who has actually had some pretty decent success against the Rams while with the Cardinals. And then on top of that, they do have Andy Isabella. Unfortunately for them, Rondell Moore is also out, and I think really that's been the biggest bummer of the entire year for them. Rondell Moore was supposed to be the focal point of this offense and you've seen they have quite not really got anything going as far as what they expected to have at this point and so I think Kyler Murray of course is going to have to take advantage of what the defense gives him and in all likelihood we're going to see more soft shell we're going to see the bend don't break and we're going to see Kyler Murray either making the defense pay for that or the defense is going to come through in a big way and be able to stop him. Either way, it's incredibly exciting for a guy like Sean Jolly, who literally is coming right off the practice squad for the Browns, had a good preseason, looked really good in that Bears game. If you haven't checked out the tape, definitely go and watch it. Again, this is somebody that is going to utilize. He's obviously a a great rap tackler, but he's going to utilize his technique and skill set. He doesn't bail on his technique and that's something I love to see he is going to sit there he is going to be a pest he is going to stick in coverage and he's not somebody that's going to get caught really grabbing you know he's not really uh you know he he believes in what he brings to the table and so because of that he feels like that's good enough and he's not really going to grab the jersey tug the jersey do anything to really force a penalty not saying he couldn't get one but based on what I saw on tape if he's ready to go and the Rams throw him into the fire you know in this game and they might uh, then I expect him to play pretty well and play at a decently high level and I expect him to be around this Rams team it's going to be really hard and it's a good problem to have for the Rams when you look at all the guys if Sean Jolly plays well what are you going to cut him because you do have all these guys that we're talking about you know that won't play like Jacoby Durant when he comes back and Troy Hill and, and David Long and all of a sudden you have a lot of corners that that's a good problem to have so right now the depth might be poor uh, you know, so far, because if anybody goes down, you've already kind of used all the depth, but the Rams did make the decision to go out and get Sean Jolly. They're in all likelihood going to dress Darion Kendrick. And you can imagine that if they need him, Grant Haley will also be promoted from the practice squad. So going into this game, I do think Arizona does have a weakness that they can exploit because Rochelle hasn't really played much this year. Obviously, Sean Jolly, this would be his first regular season game of the season. Darion Kendrick as well. So it's really a bunch of inexperience around Jalen Ramsey. It's exciting because you don't know this is a huge opportunity for all those guys. But at the same time, it's an opportunity for the Arizona Cardinals to take advantage of this. So we'll see what happens. I also think it could impact the defense because when you don't have that many guys that were, you know, around the defense and building with the defense and really learning the scheme and the playbook and et cetera, then you might have to take a step back a little bit. If you want to incorporate a guy like Sean Jolly, who doesn't even know the defensive playbook, then in all likelihood, you might have to take a step back. If you want to use him, you might not be able to call the same game that you called against the Bills or the Falcons. So that also creates an interesting dynamic here. The Rams might not play with the just the same type of scheme set that they normally would. Uh, this does impact that, I would imagine, at least slightly. They probably won't change everything everything but there are some things that could change the game plan definitely has to be adjusted anytime you lose starting caliber players you do have to adjust that game plan there are guys that can fit into that hole they can fit into the role but you can't just assume that they're going to come in right away with no strings attached and be able to pull it off because it's not always the case so we did see last year the Rams went through it with guys like Kareem Orr, 
But at the end of the day, I do think that, you know, Kareem Moore played solid football. They were able to win the game. They won 30 to 23. And I don't really expect this game to be as close as last year. I don't think the Cardinals are as good as last year. And in addition to that, I don't think they have the weapons to exploit this secondary. And in addition to that, I think this secondary mainly headlined by, you know, Jalen Ramsey and the safeties. I think the corners are going to be okay because I think at the end of the day, you're playing with that much talent all over the place. You got the pass rush. You got Jalen Ramsey. You got the safeties with Nick Scott, Jordan Fuller, Taylor Rapp. I think you have to feel pretty good about this going in. Obviously, you never want to see injuries, and I think this really sucks because it was a huge opportunity for Dakobe Durant. But now it's a huge opportunity for Sean Jolly, a UDFA, for a sixth-round pick in Darion Kendrick, and that excites me. So for that reason, I'm not worried about this. I wanted to do a video on it because I know some people are, and some people don't even realize that the Rams are going to be without three of their top four corners, but now you know. So if you enjoyed this at any point in the video, be sure to hit the like button, or if you hadn't hit the like button, be sure to hit it now, and also be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm Jake Ellenbogen, and I approve this message. You guys take care. Later.